It's a great day. Uh, and the reason the day is great is because God made it. Amen. So I, I choose to rejoice and be glad in it because he made it and I can see it. So we bless God for that. We bless God for that. We are, we are really trusting and believing God to give us wisdom in this season, in this season, in this season. Um, of course, we had one of our members to, to, to go and be with the Lord uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, Friday. But we're praying for the family. We're praying for the Watts family and uh, and we're trusting God just to keep just to keep that family because Sister Myra was very very sweet and uh, and I know she loved the Lord. So let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Keep them lifted up in prayer. That That is necessary. Uh, and, and let's pray for one another. I mean that's critical that we pray one for another. We really need to do that. Um, I'll tell you one thing. Paul said it was amazing. He said, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But he said, I'd rather stay as long as God allowed me to stay. But but he, he took it very serious that it was a better place to be absent from the body. But it needs to be God's doing and not ours. Amen. Amen. Listen, I've got a word today. I want to I want to I want to get into this word. and I want to Hear from the Lord. So I'm asking that God right now would touch every heart that it might receive and understand. Touch every eye that it might see. Touch every ear that it might hear. And most of all, Father God, I decrease in prayer that you might increase. Let it be you, not me. In the most powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Listen, uh, God has given me a thought. And, and, and when you read the Bible, God said, God's, God's word is true, but you have to apply the context to the text. Remember I said that, the context to the text. Amen? A lot of times we want to go in and we'll get a cliche. God is good. God said if I claim it, I can have it. If I name it, I can. Well, there's more to it than just what we say. And so I think the thought today is how can we get from God what we ask? But the Bible says that if we would ask, we can have it. Amen. It says in a couple of places that if we ask, we can have. It. How can we get from God what we ask? I mean, there have been many times, brothers and sisters, that I've asked. I've asked in the name of Jesus. I've done it in different kinds of ways. And nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. Nothing would happen because I took the context away from the text. You cannot take the context away from the text. There's more to the story than just asking. And that's why we have to be careful as children of God. We have to take the whole word of God and we have to apply the whole word of God into a portion of God's word. You can't just take a portion that sounds good and feels good and, and decree and declare it. I'm going to show you some things here in the scriptures where God is real clear. Over And I'm just going to give you what he say about asking. Over in John chapter 15, chapter 15, verse 16, the, it's going to be C, 16C. That whosoever, that, that whatsoever you ask, that whatsoever you ask, the Father in my name, he may give it you. He may give it you. That's, 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 that's John 15, 16. Down in 1 John 5, 14, well, 5, 15, 5, 15, 1 John 5, 15, it says this. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. <laughs> that's what they say. Whatsoever we ask. Whatsoever we ask, I'm just giving you what, what, what I'm getting out of the scriptures. Now, remember this. There's a promise, but every promise have a principle. Every promise, write that in your spirit. Every promise have a principle. There's an application to every promise. There's a revelation to every promise. I want to show you something down in 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. Verse 22. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. That's that's first John chapter three, verse twenty two. I want to give you some more. I want to give you some more. We're going to come back and deal with it, though. This is Mark chapter chapter eleven. Mark chapter eleven. Let's look at verse. Let's look at verse twenty three. D. He shall have whatsoever he asks. He shall have whatsoever he asks. And then then in twenty four he says, "You shall have them. Whatever you ask, you shall have them." And then over in John chapter four, verse 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 thirteen. John chapter I mean chapter fourteen, verse thirteen. John chapter four, verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 13. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. 
that will I do. There it is. I mean, it's right there. In verse 14, it says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I'm going to give you Psalms chapter 37, verse 4. Psalms chapter 37, verse 4. He shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, just think about it, brothers and sisters. If we took that word right there, it seems like anything we go to God with, we should be able to get. Anything that we go to God with, based on that. And a lot of people believe that. A lot of people are false accusers of God or are offended with God because they think God's word doesn't work. Well, it does work. God's, listen to me. God's word does work. But we cannot take God's word out of its context. We cannot do that and it, and it be effective. There's more to it. There's something that God has put in his word that will cause it to work. I've got some thoughts before I get into this. This, this, is what, this, is what, this is what God gave me. Asking from God is greater than words toward God. Asking from God is greater than words toward God. It's more of actions toward God. Actions. To ask and receive something from God, we must be willing to change our actions according to the whole word of God. To get this, to ask and receive something from God, we must be willing to change our actions according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. According to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Get this now. God's word is true. If God say it, it is true. But the problem is we need to understand what he said. This, this, is, this is a challenge. There's a communication problem. This is what God said. He said, you know what? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So when we approach God, brothers and sisters, we have to realize that God is different than we are. When he called us, we were already born in sin, shaped in iniquity, in opposition, in language to God. We were already there. We were already in opposition. So when God calls us into Christ, what literally happens is he begins to take us into a place of understanding by the Holy Spirit. And I think a lot of believers have given up on God because they didn't get understanding. The Bible said all of your getting, get understanding. Get understanding. Listen. The promises of God are not made to the unbeliever. Somebody need that. The promises of God are not made to the unbeliever. The promises of God are not made to those who are carnal, who say they believe and don't believe, who have never really had an opportunity to believe. They got caught up in the hoopla of believing. And so it's not given to them. It's not given to them because they'll take it. The Bible says this. The word of God is spiritually discerned. The natural man, the natural man is a man without the spirit of God. The natural man cannot receive the things of God. The natural man cannot receive the things of God because the the word of God is so powerful. God is always giving more than I can ask or think because when he's giving it, he's giving it to a person who is willing to accept what he gives, who's willing to accept what he gives. Sometimes when we're asking God for stuff or things, it does not, it's not applicable into his, into his purposes and plans for our lives. It's not applicable for, for what he wants to do with us. So some things we'll ask God for in our youth, spiritual youth, in our babyhood, even in our adolescent years. We'll ask God for things from an immature place, and God does not do it. We can lose God right there. We can break relationship right there. We can stop seeking God deeply right there. And a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ stop really seeking God right there. Right there, they were, we were asking God for things that we were not ready for, that he had not developed us for, that he had not had the opportunity to prepare us for. So I want to go back and look what he said for real. You ready? Let's go back into these scriptures. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Now, John chapter 15, verse 16. John chapter 16, verse, I mean, chapter 15, verse 16. This is what he said. I, I gave you the portion where he said that, whos, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now, here it is. This is a whole thing. Let's go back to, to, to the very beginning. You have not chosen me. This is this is this is context of, of that scripture portion of the context. When you deal with the context of a scripture, a lot of times you need to read the beginning of a chapter to the end of a chapter, or either the beginning of a letter to the end to find out the whole kitten and caboodle or the beginning of a book to the end. You need the context. Who is God talking to? What is God saying? Why is God saying it? And does it apply to me in my life at this time? Does it apply to me in my life at this time? Amen. Amen. Now, John 15, 16 says this. You have not chosen me. Jesus is talking. Disciples, I have chosen you. 
I have ordained you that you should go go and bring forth fruit. That's one thing that is required that applies to this scripture. He said, first, I want you to go and bring forth fruit. He's talking about the spiritual, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He's talking about souls, but not just souls, but the character of the souls. He says, he says, I've, I've chosen you that you will you will go and bring forth fruit. So the first thing you do, the first fruit begins in my soul. The trans, transformation of my the way I act, the way I interact. Can the Holy Spirit change me? Can the Holy Spirit convict me? Can the Holy Spirit raise me up? That's the challenge, brothers and sisters. And so, 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 so if he can't change me, how does this word that what God says, whatsoever you ask apply to my life? It does not. It do, if, I, if God cannot change me, if, if God can't have a say in my life, if God can't have a standard in my life, then he's not talking to me when it comes to whatsoever. Let me give the rest of this. That you should go, go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask. Because he, he's dealing with the growth and development of our spirit. That's what he's dealing with. He's dealing with an intimate relationship with him. He's dealing with a, a, a getting closer to him. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. The closer we get to God, the more our desires change. Anybody ever experienced that? The closer we get to God. Now, flesh is always going to have some stuff that it wants. But the closer we get to God, the more our desires change. The more our desires line up with God's desires for our lives. Let me give you this next one. Let's go back to 1 John 5.14. Let's go back over there. You remember I gave you 5.14, 1 John. Let's go back over there. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have that, that, the, the petition that we desire of him. Now, let's look at verses 5, 5.14 to 5.15, 1 John. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, that's a condition. That's the content. That's the content of that text or the context of that text. Look, he said, if we ask anything according to his will, how do we know God's will? God's will is manifested through our love for him, our commitment to him, our dedication as we yield to the Holy Spirit. We cannot entrust our mind, our logic to know God's will for that moment. Because God's will for one moment can be different the next moment because he's we are moving forward by the spirit of God. So God's will for one moment, you can't trust, you can't trust our intellect and our logic. We have to yield to the Holy Spirit and let him come forth. Hear that by the Spirit of God. It's going it's to refresh you. It's going to restore you. So, so verse 14 says this, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hear us. First thing he's going to do, he's going to hear us. He's, he's going to hear us, but it's got to be in line. We got to be in sync with him. Our conversation got to be on the same accord. This is how you get your conversation on accord with God. Listen to God rather than talking so much. Listen to God. Listen to God rather than talk. When I get on my face, I'm more interested in listening to God. I'm more interested in hearing his voice. I'm more interested in hearing his instructions. I get on my face with, thank you, Lord. I bless you. I glorify you. I worship you. I praise you. I need you. I need you to forgive me. There's a conviction when you really get into deep praise. There's a conviction of my sin. While I'm dealing with that, God is drawing me into a deeper place where he can minister to me, and then his will can manifest in my life. Amen. While, while I'm dealing with, while I'm in the presence, I'm really, he's really drawing me to that deep, deep place of contrition, of repentance, of crying out, God, you know, I, I didn't pay that attention. He began to reveal to you the little things that are a hindrance to your prayers being manifested. He, he began to reveal it to you. If you stay there long enough, you're seeking that. So a lot of times we get on our knees and we go to God with petitions. That, but but this, hear me about this. The best way to go to God is in humility. And he's, he's God. He's got all power in his hands. He's great. He's to be respected. He's to be honored. He's to be praised. Glory to God. He's to be magnified. He's to be magnified. So, so, so then he's to be respected because I know, God, there's some things that, that ain't quite right. I need you to help me with. So, so I don't go tell them what they are. I let him reveal them to me. I let God, or let God, I let God reveal them to me. How does he reveal it? When I get into that place of contrition. When I, when I allow him to draw me into that deep place of contrition. When he begins to show me, you know, Michael, you, you, you. This, this, these are the things that happen. I don't argue with God. I say, God, forgive me. Because when he really show it to you, it breaks your heart. Ain't no argument. There's no, there's, you, 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 don't, you don't have a battle. Now, if you, if you want to be, if you want to miss the purpose of prayer, argue with him. 
Say, no, God, they did this to me. God, you don't understand. God, go ahead and do it. And what will happen is the prayer will end because God knows the truth and we don't. He said, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. God knows the truth and we don't. None of us should be arrogant enough to dare get in the presence of God and tell God something. No. And don't be talking about other folk in your prayer. It's enough mess with me. God already know. What I choose to do is, if, if I remember something in my contrition where I've been offended or hurt, I say, God, I, they need the same forgiveness I need. They need the same mercy I need. Help them, God, because I need your help. I don't say, God, you know, you need to deal with them because he might deal with me. And I can't afford for God to deal with me at that level. It could destroy me. So I ask God for the same mercy you're giving me, give them. And then I can expect that of God. Hear this. Verse 15. I can expect that of God. Verse 15. Here it is. And if and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. There it is. Why? After, after that moment of, with God. Let's, let's go to 1 John 3, 22. 1 John 3, 22. 1 John 3, 22. I want to give you this. I want to give you this. We're going to do 22 and 23. 1 John. Excuse me. Amen. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. That's how it starts. Because we keep, here, here's the condition, here's the content of it, because we keep his commandments. Get that. Get that. Get in your spirit. And do those things that are pleasing in his power that God, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Sometimes we can get so caught up in the flesh and our hurt, our pain, our, we, can, we can start doing crazy stuff. The crazy stuff it's not the outward stuff that you do. It's the inward condition of our heart where we hold and harbor unforgiveness, our anger, our bitterness, our resentment, hostility. We count up everything that somebody's done to us. You know, last week, they, I got them. I'm watching them this from now on. <laughs> you need to be keeping your eyes on God because <laughs> they're going to mess you up. They're going to make you mad all day, every day. <laughs> so this is what he's saying. He said, now, whatever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing. How do we know what's pleasing? How do we know what's pleasing? The intimacy brings forth the pleasure. He said, those who take pleasure in God, he'll give you the desires of your heart. The pleasure in God is not something that we do casually and, and look and, and have him on the, on the same level as everything else. Like, I love my car. I love this restaurant. I love that woman. I love that man. I love that. No, no, no. No, no. God should be higher. He should be priority. I should take pleasure in God and disrupt everything else. When you really take pleasure in God, you disrupt. You'll go to, even if you're on your job and it's not going, you'll go to the, you'll find you a place to go and, 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 and talk to God and pray to God. You, you'll, you'll disappear inside of your inner being, glory to God, and pray to God. When you take pleasure in God, he says, he says this in verse 23. 20, let me do 22 and 23 together. Here I go. For whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Now watch what his commandments are and do those things that are pleasing. And this is his commandments, verse 23, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Believe means I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be obedient to what I know Christ is compelling me to do by the word of God. You have to be disciplined. We have to discipline ourselves to be obedient because you got to remember flesh was there first. Flesh was there first and flesh will fight for us to stay obedient to flesh. So, so he says this, and this is the commandments that we should believe on the name, believing on the name of, of, of his son, Jesus Christ, is being obedient, loving, and love one another. Love one another. See, you, you'll be surprised that you can love everybody here, but you got one person you hate, that's the person that's hurting you. You got one person that you know that's dirty, Lord, that's the person that's hurting you. Ask God to take them out of your sight. It could be somebody very close. The biggest enemy to this word are those that's closest to you. You think you got a right to disrespect the person you married to. You got to think you got a right to hate them or, or to, to find their faults or to meditate on, your, on their faults on your children or your parents or your grandparents. No, no, no. No, no, no. At work, you got, you got these little relationships where you, 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 you smile and you, and you grin, but you're you really cussing each other out. Every, every word come out of your mouth is it's a cut, though. Cold-blooded word. <laughs> amen. Y'all ain't giving me no amen. I'm going to go back to the camera if y'all ain't going to talk. <laughs> I bet they're giving me amens out there. Now, let's go to Mark 11, 22. Mark 11, 22. Let's go there. I want to show you something. Well, let's go to Mark 11. I'm, I'm, 
the 22, it says this. Because I gave you, I gave you 23 and 20, I mean 23 and 24. So we're going to do the whole thing now. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. That's one thing. Have faith in God. Faith in God. Do you know so a lot of things compete with our faith in God? And, and it's natural. Do you, you know, when you look at the, at the miracles in the Bible, the Bible says this woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. Remember that? But the Bible also said that she had gone to the doctors. Had gone to the doctor. Remember, she had gone to the doctor and they had taken all of her money. And when she didn't have no more money, she went to Jesus. We have to go to Jesus first, shouldn't we? Amen. 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 So, so, so here's a thought. And Jesus actually said unto, unto, unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that, who, that whomsoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not die in his heart. But shall now listen, got to deal with doubt. The only way you can deal with doubt is get faith. The only way you're going to get faith is hearing and hearing the word of God. That's the only way you can deal with doubt, this kind of doubt. He said, he said, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. Now look at verse 24 with me. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. This is God talking to us. He said, and when you stand praying, here, here's a condition. Here's a condition. When you stand praying, if you, if listen, if you're expecting God to really answer it, we need to focus on this part and let God focus on his part. Amen. God's part is to produce it. Our part is to obey and get it. And when you stand praying, verse 25, forgive if you have ought against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespass. It's so critical and it's so hard. There's a passivity in forgiveness, brothers and sisters. It's a passivity. It's like, you know, because they're close to me and they're going to be there. I don't really have to go to the extreme with them. But let me share something with you. We do. We have to really seek God for his forgiveness. His forgiveness. We need the same forgiveness when Jesus got on the cross. You remember when Jesus got, and Jesus said these words, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. For they know not what they do. Some things you can sit back and you be like, for them to be a Christian, they cannot know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. For they, they don't know that they're violating something. They don't know, Father, so please forgive them. We need, we need the forgiveness of Christ. And we need to ask Jesus, Jesus, give me your forgiveness. The Holy Spirit, release glory to God. Release into me continuously the forgiveness I need in order to have the right relationship with God. Because some things you can overlook. Some things, but as long as it's there, that unforgiveness is there, there is a hindrance. There is a blockage. It's like a, it's like a, pers a person got blockage in, when, when, when it comes to their arteries. You know, you, it's there. It's, it's, it's in there. Although your, your blood can get around that one artery, but the thing about it is if that artery was cleared out, Things would be better. Your heart would be able to function better. The same way it is. When you got any, when we have anything that is in, in, in defect or in contradiction to God's word going on in our lives, and once the Holy Spirit reveal it to us, we're obligated to seek God, seek God, seek God, seek God until it's removed. Now, a lot of times we don't know that it's removed until the listen, till the blessing or the answer to our prayer is manifested. A lot of times we don't know. Listen to me. A lot of times. We don't know it's removed until the prayer is answered. Hear that. Hear that now. That's important. It says this in, in, verse, in, verse, in verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have all the sin. Here it is. That your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither. And, and listen, it's already in place. It's already a principle. It's already a promise. It's not like God is getting off his throne to whoop you because you won't forgive. No, no, no. It's written. It's already written in his word. Jesus said it is finished. God said it is finished. We can stand on the word of God. Some things hurt real bad, but it happens to see whether you can forgive. Can you get past it? Because God lets something happen bad so you can have something good. God will let something happen that you consider. Oh, God, why did they treat me like good? They treated me like that because I need to get on away from them anyway, because there was a ceiling locked down that I couldn't get to where I wanted to be or what God wanted me to be. Amen. So, so we need to we need to forgive. Now, now he says this, but if you do not forgive, neither will your father which is heaven forgive your trespass. Let's go to John chapter fourteen. John chapter fourteen. Chapter fourteen. Let's let's look at let's start at verse eleven. Remember, we read down in verse thirteen where it says, "Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified." If if you shall ask anything in my name, I do. Let's start and see what all he's saying about this. He says, "Believe me that I am in the Father." He said, and the Father in me. Everything is about the kingdom of God here, brothers and sisters. 
It's not about our worldly desires. The Bible says when we seek God, we seek God in, in righteousness and in truth, then these things shall be added to us. What did he say? Seek your first kingdom of God and his righteousness. Right? And all these things shall be what? Added to us. So everything is about the kingdom of God. He said, verily, verily, I say in verse, in verse 12, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do. And greater works shall he do also, because I go to the Father. For whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything, this is kingdom work. This is, this is, this is when you start praying for others. What God bringing your life or bringing our lives, we really don't ask for. It's greater than we can ask a thing. It's greater than, sometimes you'll, you'll, we'll get bogged down in asking God for a specific thing, or a specific kind of house, what we can afford and what we think we should have. And God be like, I got something. I don't even want to hear that prayer because you're not even praying right. I got something greater than that. I just need you to get this part right. So this is what he said. He said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Verse 15 is the key. Here it is. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's the locker to that whole principle, that whole, that whole thing that he said. So we, you can't just go to him and you say, well, you know, Jesus, if I, I did ask it in your name and I don't know why. It's, I can tell you why it's not happening. And you wanna, if you want to know, I can tell you. The reason it's not happening is because you're refusing to let love abide and reign inside of you. It's not easy to love. And the, the natural man don't want to really love. He wants conditional love. The natural man don't want to really love. And it's hard for the natural man to, to understand love. But listen, it, it comes up from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We have to yield to the Holy Spirit to really love. I, I, go, I want you to go with me to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. He says, he says this in 37. Go to verse 4. Verse 4, Psalm 37, 4. I want you to get this. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> I, mean, he, I mean, over and over again, uh, uh, God, you're saying this. What do we do? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The, the scripture don't just say, you know, he shall give me the desires of my heart. It says I got to delight. What does it mean to delight myself in the Lord? It means I'm, I have a willingness to be flexible in the presence of God. I have a willingness to be I, I want to. I, I, I want to take, I, I take pleasure in, in his presence. I don't see it as, when he corrects me, I don't see it as negative. I thank him for correcting me. I thank him, I thank him for stopping some things. You know, I was coming through the lights this morning. I was like, God, I'm getting a stop sign every, a stop light every time I get there. And, and I know that, that God is so amazing, brother and sister said. He could have been saving me from something. He, he could, every light, I was like, God, I'm getting a stop every light. And then I started thanking him that I got to stop every light because I don't know what he saved me from. So you see, I don't know what he saved, saved me. It, it was more important that I get where I was going than to, than to get through every light. God knows that. God knows that. I got something else for you. I want to give you something. I got something else for you. Let's go to James. I want to show you something what James said, why we don't get our prayers like the prayers. That's why we don't get what we ask. Let's go to James chapter four. James, St. James. Jesus is half brother, step brother. Amen. Jesus didn't call him step brother, he just called him brother. James chapter 4, verse 2. Verse 2. Let's, let's start there. He says this. This is the reason that, that James said we, we don't get what we ask for. Amen. He says, you lust. The word lust is we have these, these, these desires that are beyond measure. It's not just a, it's not, it does not deal with promiscuity or sexuality always, but it's a desire out of God's divine order. And have not. He said, you kill. You kill, that means, in other words, you walk over others and you tear them down. And you don't care what they feel. And you don't care what they're going through. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You cannot obtain. He said, you fight in war. You, you, you get mad at people because they don't dance to your music. They don't do what you tell them to do. You cannot control them. You cannot dictate to them. Amen. I mean, you get hostile. I can't believe you did not give me that $500. It was their money. <laughs> what not it? It's like, I cannot believe you. <laughs> if you go on and get past them, God got 5,000. Guarantee you, if he wants you to have it. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, because your attitude is so horrible, he don't want you to have nothing. God is good, right? Listen, so here, here it is. Now, watch, watch verse, verse 3. He says, he said, no, no, back to verse 2. He says, you, yet you have not because you ask not. Jesus said, ask. Now, don't let people tell you how many times to ask God. Jesus gave a scripture once where he talked about this judge, and he did not believe in God. But there was this woman, and she kept going to him and asking him to avenge her. She kept on going. He said, you know what? I'm not doing it because I believe in God. I'm not doing it. He said, I'm doing it because you worry me. 
And then so so you got to we got to stay with God. Don't get tired of you talking to him. Sometimes God will keep it just because you are talking to him. You don't talk to him under no other circumstance. He might hold it back on you because you need to get back into prayer. You were praying when you didn't have no money. You were broken. You were trying to make it. Now, all of a sudden, you got a need. You, you say quick prayers now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I sure want you to bless me today. And bless everybody. But, but when trouble comes, we get on our face and start saying, now, God, God, help me. Please, Lord, help me. God, we stay with God until change comes. So what is God more concerned about, the condition of my soul, my intimacy with him, or what I'm asking him for? The condition of my soul. God already knows what he's supplying in our lives, even though we don't want to recognize it and realize it sometimes. He's always supplying in the believer's life what they need to be believers. That's most important. Not what you need to live in a certain house, not what you need to drive a certain car, not what you need to go to a certain restaurant, but to what we need to stay saved. He's always supplying that. Now, let me show you what James said. I want, I want to get here. Look at verse 3. It says this. You ask and you receive not because you ask or miss. A-M-I-S-S, a miss, that you may consume it on, upon yourselves. Let me give you A-M-I-S-S. It means, the, it means to miss the intent and purpose of God and what I'm asking for. Is what I'm asking for going to serve God? Is it going to, is it going to glorify God in any way? Um, is it going to make me a more effective servant for the kingdom of God? Hear that. If it's not, then you're leaving God out altogether because God don't even work like that. God is not just about me. It's not just God. Is, why would God invest in just about me? God is a mighty God. He's got the whole world. So if, if we go into God, we need to go to God as servants. God, I'm available. Now, now, this is what I feel like I'm supposed to have. But I could be missing you. I don't want to miss you. So now, God, you tell me what I'm supposed to have. And then before you tell me what I'm supposed to have, tell me what I'm supposed to do with it. Everything don't come from God, brothers and sisters. Some things we get on our own. So somebody told me, they said, you know, God won't give me no more than I can bear. I said, but you'll give yourself a little more. See, we, God, don't, God don't give you what you can't bear. It's not things God don't give. You know, we, we're human. I mean, he made us, he gave us dominance and, and authority in the earth. We can go out and get some stuff that God ain't got nothing to do with. You did it before you got saved. You can do it after you get saved. And so what we'll do is we'll say, well, you know, when you ain't that connected to God where God can even stop you from getting certain things. God is not going to put on me no more now. We put stuff on ourselves. It's some things that I back away from. It's like, uh-uh. Uh, uh God ain't, if he don't, if he don't give me clearance, I go back to bed. I get back in my chair. I'd be like, no, I can't do nothing with that. Why? Because, see, the only way I can justify God not giving me any more than I can bear, the only way I can justify it is this. Make sure I didn't give myself it. Make sure that what I'm dealing with came from God. When God gives you something, and, and when God gives you something, God will, will give you whatever you need to function. If you can't function, you might need to get that up. If you lose your joy, if you lose your peace, if you lose your kindness, you might need to walk away from that. I, kept, I didn't get that word out I wanted to say. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. So here it is, here it is. Here it is. So that word amiss means we, we got it, the intent and the purpose of God is, is what I'm asking for going to serve God. Uh, it's, 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 it's my motives in line with God. See, what, what God gives, all good and perfect gifts, without, and that means without pressure, without duress. They come from God. Now listen, brothers and sisters, sometimes we get greedy. We be wanting stuff. We be like, okay, I'm, I, I want this, I want that, I'm going to go out here and do it. My credit will afford me that. My credit will afford me that. I, I know I can't, but I'm going I'm I'm to work on my ass. God to give me the money to pay this bill. <laughs> God didn't have nothing to do it in the first place. He ain't never say, he didn't sign up on that deal. Whatever God orders, he pays for. Without pressure. I'm, I'm, listen, brothers and sisters, let me give you this. Asking from God is greater, greater than words toward him. Remember that. So our motives need, need to be in place. And also, in order for us not to ask amiss, it needs to be the purpose and the plan of God. It needs to be the purpose and the plan of God. Let me tell you something. It's God still answers prayer. God will give me what I ask for, but I need to understand that it don't need to be about me. It needs to be about him. I've learned that God has added to my life more than I've asked for when I make it about him. Listen, when I'm doing God's will, when God give me something, I remember I was in my house years ago putting up all these uh, ceiling fans and I was content. I could I was in a place of affordability. I was comfortable. And God said, you can ready to move. I was like, move. I said, like, God, really? And I began to rebuke the devil. Why? Because I had just gotten comfortable. I just got to a place where I was comfortable. I mean, I could and I had all put in ceiling fans upstairs and down. I was, I was straight. I could go in any room and cool down. Amen. 
But he said, look, I want you to go over here and find And just, just sweet in my spirit. So I told my wife, I said, we can go find a house. We had no idea. She took me to place after place after place. I said, no, nope, that's not it. Man. When we found it, we found it. But it wasn't what we thought. It was what he had for us. That's the key to it. See, when God say do it, and then he provided for it. He provided for it. We don't suffer in our lifestyle. Why? Because God ordered it and he paid for it. See, when, you, when you're dealing with God, you got to stay with God. And then this is nothing, brothers and sisters. God is not going to give you something that's going to cause you to go get you five jobs. Where you don't have no time for him. Because God can afford whatever. If you're, Listen, you're, you, we live by faith. Whatever your faith can afford, you can have. You, you're so busy out there trying to get the money, get you some faith. The just shall live by faith. And if you can live by faith, you can have victory. So when you ask God for something, be ready to receive it and then live it out by faith. When trouble comes, it's when your faith should kick in. I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But when trouble comes, it's when our faith should, should kick in. If our faith don't kick in, hear this, then God never ordered it. Or we don't have enough faith to afford it. Some things you have to walk away from and regroup. If, if you're losing your sanity, which your spiritual sanity, your peace, your joy, this is hard. A lot of people can't do this. You got to let it go. Let it go to God before you let it go back to man. Just say, God, you know what? I surrender this. I'm going to get back in you. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to be doing with you. And then if you want me to have this, you'll provide for me. But I have, I am, I've lost my peace. I've lost my joy. Say, somebody said the devil is alive. Amen. Amen. But listen, brothers and sisters, listen to me very carefully. Can't do that without Jesus. <laughs> we can't do it without the Lord's glory to God. We can't, we don't, we can't do, we cannot effectively ask God for anything and it comes in our lives without Jesus said if you have you got to have your faith in me as a son you got to believe in me but listen if you never accepted Jesus Christ then this is this this message is just another bunch of words the Bible said the natural man cannot receive the things of God he said they are foolishness unto him foolishness unto him hear that so 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 we need Jesus in order to what in order to ask God and get effective results we need the Holy Spirit to monitor and tell us it ain't the time. He's, it's going to manifest. God's season is greater than our season. So we, but we can't have the Holy Spirit without, without Jesus. So how do we get Jesus? We ask Jesus to come to our heart, come to our lives. We ask him. But we first ask God to forgive us for our sins and our trespasses. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my trespasses. You can do that right now. If you don't have, if you're in a backslidden state, say, God, restore me back. I, I did lose my, 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 my zeal for you. I lost my my excitement for you, my joy for you, because life has hit me so hard. But Father, draw me back. Please draw me back. Because the Bible says he's married to the backslider. But to the ones who really need the Lord, have never accepted him as Lord and Savior. This is for you now. Father, forgive me for my sins and trespasses. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I need you, Lord. I need you. Then receive him as your Lord and Savior. Receive him by faith. By faith. And then begin to surrender your life to him. And he'll help us with that. And then ask him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Ask him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. It's not complex. It's not hard. Jesus made it easy. But I have to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. So, so if you've accepted him, confess with the mouth, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. Father God, I thank you for raising him from the dead. I thank you for saving my soul on this day. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, listen, listen. It's important that we realize that God should be first when we ask Jesus to come in. What does that mean? Ask God to give you wisdom. He'll help you to understand. And if he's no longer first in your life, if everything else is so important, ask God to restore him being first in your life. Ask him that anyway. Ask him to restore it anyway, because sometimes we get so caught up. We can get caught up in the blessings of God and miss God, and then the blessings become a curse. But listen to me, brothers and sisters. The bottom line is God answers prayers. God will give us what we ask if it's in accord with what he wants. It's not about me or you. It's about his kingdom, his will. Amen. Now, listen, brothers and sisters, you know, we're obligated as believers to give. We're supposed to bring our tithe and our offerings into the storehouse. So there'll be meat in God's house. You know, we're obligated. to give. You can give online. You can give. You can give. You can mail it in. How you got to do it? But still obedient in your giving. Uh, it's a bad thing, brothers and sisters, to begin to, to, to get into an area of faith and then drop out. The enemy will attack you. God won't beat you up and punish you. No, the enemy, Satan is a very real adversary. He will attack you when you don't obey God in his word. So once you get a truth and you understand that truth, stay in that truth. Don't back away from it. Because, because you, if you back away from it, Satan will dominate your life. 
in any truth. So listen, here's an opportunity to give. We need to give what God said give. And, and I've been I've been I've been talking about the first fruit. But the first fruit is a is a uh, the first of the first fruit is an offering that you set aside, you prepare, you give God and say, God, you are first. You've been good to me last year. And, 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 and to people who don't believe, that's your prerogative. But it works for me in my house. Anything I teach you from this pulpit works for me in my household. And, and everybody takes little bits and pieces and then you see them struggling in areas and they, they're trying to fix it. But, but there's an area where you refuse to be obedient. So you, there's, you gather it and then you, and then you bring it and then you trust God that he, that he will take care of you continuously in a way that you can't imagine. Great way that you can't imagine. That's that first of the first fruit. Beginning in February, which is next week, I'm going to begin the teaching on the first of the first fruit. Now, but the tithing and offerings, tithe is holy, it belongs to God. God should always be first. I remember some, somehow I got some money off one of the rental properties we got. And I was sitting at my computer this morning. And I was thinking, God, did I give that? I wasn't sure, so I, made, I gave it again. Because well, <laughs> I can't take a chance. God is too good to me. I can't take a chance. So, so, so that's the thing. It is that He's got to be so important to you that you do what is necessary. That you do what is necessary. And then however he convicts you, be obedient. When you talk about the first of the first fruit, and this, some people will give a day salary, a week, a month salary, whatever. When you give sparingly, you get sparing. When you give, uh, when you give bountifully, you get bountifully. It's your choice. But how can God use me in his kingdom if I'm stingy? I put God on Do you know, brothers and sisters, I'm done. I'm done. I've, I've gone further than I want to go today. But do you realize, hear me by the Spirit of God. I want you to hear this. Do you realize that, that in the New Testament, when you want to get deep with God, the giving is greater. Do you know they told them in the book of Acts, go sell your land. Go sell it. And so that nobody will have lack. So we, the tithe is only a scale to go by. That should be my very minimum. I don't ever want to give a base tithe. I used to give a base tithe, and it got me to where I can give a greater base, a greater tithe. It is, when you look in the New Testament, it's not that 10%. It is greater based on the book of Acts. So, so don't get deep with God like you are this prima donna that can, 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 can minister to God. You're not. I'm not. Study the word so that you can get the benefits out of the word. In the name of Jesus. Listen, brothers and sisters, I love you. I thank God for you. I pray that, I pray that you are blessed. Um, and I pray that peace will be still. Don't forget to go ahead and keep masking up now and, and uh, social distancing and washing your hands and keeping yourself together. Keep believing God for life and not death health and not sickness. Peace, joy in the name of Jesus. I love you. Be blessed in Christ Jesus. Amen.